Hey guys, David Chamberlain here with Driven Racing Oil. In this multi-part video series, I wanna talk with you guys about breaking in an engine without a dyno. Now there's a lot of great video out there and good educational content on breaking in an engine with a dyno and how to use the dyno as a tool to load the engine to make sure you have good piston ring sealing and to gather data points to quantify and measure if you've had a successful engine break-in. But how do you know that you've had a good engine break-in and how do you break in your engine without a dyno? We're gonna get into that today, but before we do, I wanna talk about the purpose of the engine break-in period and why it's important to have a fully formulated break-in oil instead of just a zinc additive on top of your off-the-shelf engine oil. The purpose of the engine break-in period is that it is essentially the last machining process of the engine build. With any freshly machined part, you're gonna have peaks and valleys. These peaks and valleys are called asperities. And the break-in oil chemistry, the fully formulated break-in oil like you see here with the break-in 30 or the BR1550, helps to chemically assist those parts to make together. Whether you're talking about cam and lifters or piston ring to cylinder wall, you're trying to create good surface area for the longevity of those parts so you have a good long engine life. The break-in oil chemistry is, is key. It's not the same as your off-the-shelf engine oils. The main points of a break-in oil chemistry is higher ZDDP or zinc, lower detergent. The reason you wanna have higher zinc is because essentially there is no zinc phosphate layer on any of these parts already. So you're trying to lay down a primer, if you will, on the parts to create a good sacrificial phosphate film to help these parts mate in and wear in together. The lower detergent is important too because you want to have a lower detergent so that it's not competing for the surface area of the, of the, of the parts. It's not competing with the ZDDP or the zinc. The detergent is polar, just like the zinc, so it's gonna be attracted to ferrous metal parts, like your cam and lifters. And the more detergent that's in the oil, it's going to compete with that ZDDP or zinc. The other crucial part is you wanna have no molly, no friction modifiers, and this is why you've probably heard people say, don't run a, don't run a synthetic, make sure you run a conventional for the engine break-in period. Well, that's part of it, a synthetic, has a lower coefficient of friction, and so you want that wear. You want the piston rings to wear in with the cylinder wall. You need friction and, and that wear period to happen. So you don't wanna have molly. That's gonna hinder uh, the piston ring sealing up, uh, that's, and that's not good. Uh, the other reason why it's important not to have a higher detergent level you can see here, I've got a few beakers in front of me. And these are different oil formulations. You can see I've got this one here that's milked up white. And this one has a high detergent level. These two over here and this have a low detergent level. If you have a higher detergent level for break-in and your rings aren't sealed up for any engine, the, the, you know, part of the purpose of breaking in the engine is that the rings aren't sealed up yet. Well, you're gonna have more fuel dilution. So if you have more fuel dilution, the more fuel and oil are mixing together. If you have higher detergent, the more likely you are to get this compared to this. And this is good separation. This is ethanol with our BR40. And you can see the ethanol, if you look closely here, is sitting on top of the BR40. That's important because you want, as temperature increases in the engine during the break-in period, you want it to have the ability to flash off or vapor off. If it's emulsified like this, you're not gonna get that. Over here, you can see you got water and BR, or BR1550, you have good separation there. That is because there is a lower level of detergent in these two oils. The same here with our GP1 break-in 30. So these are some of the key points when it comes to a fully formulated break-in oil and why that's important. To have that already ready to go for your break-in period 
I don't recommend zinc additives. The zinc additives are kind of a crutch. Um, for one, it's not already mixed in with the oil and it takes temperature and load and, and those sort of things to mix in with the oil. And until that run-in time happens and you get up to temperature, it's not mixed in yet. Um, it's also like playing chemistry Russian roulette. You don't really know how it's gonna to mix together. So in the next part, the next piece of this video series, we're gonna talk about the actual break-in process you should follow without a dyno. Thanks for watching, see you in a minute.